Up to this point in React, we've been working with our state, but it's never been persisted. So if we actually look at the application from a different browser, we hard refresh it, we lose all of our data. So today we're going to add Firebase as our backend so that we have a service to actually store our state. In the previous tutorial, we worked on having multiple songs. So we were storing more than just one song worth of state. But the problem is, is we only have two songs and they're hard coded and that's it. And if we go in and we actually modify a song to have new lyrics, we, we get this nice thing where we can hit the back button and go back into song one and we'll still have those new lyrics. But if we hit command shift R or the hard refresh in whatever browser you're using, we lose those lyrics because they're not actually saved anywhere. So. What we want to do today is actually rig up a backend for us. And since we're doing a very front end centric tutorial series here, we don't want to have to go through and actually set up like a Rails server or some other thing to actually be our server and manage the database. So we're going to use Firebase. Firebase is a tool. Um, it was a startup and then they were bought by Google and now it's it's part of Google essentially, but it's a platform that kind of gives us access to a database over WebSockets that we can use from within our application. And then we are going to use a third party library that sort of builds on top of this and is baked, like it's built specifically for React that lets us work with state the way we have been working with state, but in the meantime, it will connect to Firebase and store our data for us. So there's gonna be a very small layer that we interact with here in order to store the state that we have in our Firebase database. So the first thing you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to have to go to uh, Firebase. So if you go to console.firebase.google.com, this will take you in here. And that's if you're, if you're signed in. So I'm signed in on one of my accounts right now. And then we need to create a project. So once you're here, you'll follow these steps. And we're gonna call this Chord Creator. Um, I'm not even sure if it's allowed having spaces. Apparently it works, so that'll work out for us. Now that we've moved in here, uh, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna add Firebase to our web app. This will pop up and give you some code with all of this. And for anybody who's about to leave a comment, I know that I'm exposing secrets to you guys. I will delete this project after this tutorial is over and I'll use a different one with different secrets for the rest of the tutorial series. So no worries there. So we'll just copy this config hash and then we will work from this. So back in our project, what we're gonna do is we want to yarn add re-base because we need this dependency and this will be how we interact with it. But this is the first thing we've added to our React application to where we're gonna we need to write some code that's not actually a component. So one of the questions that you might run into is where should I put that? In this particular case, I'm just gonna put it at the root of our source directory. So I'm gonna go into source and we're gonna call this base.js. In this file, we're gonna import rebase from re-base, and then we also want to import Firebase from Firebase, and rebase has a dependency on Firebase, that's how we have access to this. So we'll do const config equals, and then we can actually just paste this in here. I suppose change this var to a const, delete this, straighten those things out. So we've got that. And then we're gonna add a couple more down here. We're gonna have an app. So we'll have firebase.initialize app with the config. And then we will create a base object using rebase, create class app.database. And then lastly, we want to export base so that we can import this into other classes that need this. So we'll save that. But one thing that I'm looking at this right now, we are hard coding our API keys in here. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, we, we sort of have to, this is going to be this, this file has to actually live in the browser. And that's a little weird too. Like what, what are we doing with API keys in the browser? So Firebase you know, kind of they're, they're built for this to be able to handle it in this specific sort of way. But from our side, I probably want to have different keys in development than I want to have when I do a production build of this thing. So I want these to be configurable somehow. Thankfully for us, uh, create react app has its webpack config set up to where it will auto import environment variables that start with react underscore app underscore something else. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually create an env file. So we'll just create env, and then we're gonna do react app underscore 
Firebase key. And it's going to be kind of quite a few of these things here. So this is going to be the sender ID, storage bucket, project ID, database. And then we actually need another one here that's going to be for the domain. And this, these all map directly to what we have here, so we can copy this stuff and bring it over. So let's put this down here. It's probably not the most efficient way to do this, but it'll get the job done. Storage buckets empty, so that works out. And do it like this. We just gotta make sure we get rid of these commas. Okay, straighten this stuff out. And then we can actually go through and we'll we'll just get rid of the double quotes on all this stuff. Except for this one. We'll put we'll put something there. Okay, so now that we have these environment variables in an ENV file, these will automatically get read in, and then in our actual code. If we come back over here where we have API key, we can replace this with process.env.react app Firebase key. So I'm going to stop and do the rest of these, and then I'll come back when I'm done. So we've added all of these environment variables. Let's make sure everything is still compiling, so that's good. But that's because we're not actually using this anywhere. So that'll be our next step, is we need to actually pull this in and do something with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to app.js. We're going to import this. So we want to import base from base. I guess it'll be there we go, base like that. And then if we bounce back over here, it's compiling. It's giving us a thing because it's not used, which is fine. So we're going to get rid of this song state. We're going to we're going to actually clear these out. So we're going to say that there's a songs hash, but it just doesn't have anything in it. And then to actually connect into the state here, what we're going to do is we're going to do a component will mount. And then we're going to do a matching one for this that will will unmount. There we go. And these are two of the lifecycle methods that React gives us. So similar to constructor, uh, we're not going to have to bind these the same way we did with update song higher up in the file, but these will run at specific points when we're creating or tearing down React components. And that's important to us because the free um, plan for Firebase is actually really generous, and it's going to be more than enough for all of what we need, but it limits you on the number of active connections you can have simultaneously for your WebSockets. So what that means is we need to create our connection when somebody first comes to the page. That way we can bind up our, we can go fetch our state, we can display our state and go from there. And then when they leave the page, we need to tear that stuff down. So when they go to um, when they go to actually leave our application, the component will unmount, it's going to fire off, it's going to kind of recycle the, the ref is what it's going to be called. And that connection will go back into the pool of available connections for us. So for that, what we're going to do is we're going to go, we're going to say this is a songs ref, and we're going to use base sync state. And then we're going to sync the state of songs. It's going to take a hash here. In the context of this, is this, and the state itself is going to be songs. So what this is saying is, okay, I want you to sync into songs inside of Firebase from songs on me. So essentially, this hash is kind of telling it to like, I want songs inside of Firebase to always equal this dot state dot songs. So this is basically what it's doing there for us. But we save this off as a ref, and then what we're going to do is we're going to do in the component will unmount bit, we are going to do base dot remove binding this songs ref. And there we go. Now our lifecycle events with base are complete. So if we look back, we have no compilation error, so that's good for us. And then looking at this, you can see that we actually did run into an error. Can't determine Firebase database URL. Oh, that actually, I think, is because we need to spin this back up.
Yep, that was it. So we have no songs. And this is kind of a problem because up to this point, we've always worked with fake songs, which means we don't actually have a way to create a song. So that is kind of a bummer. But before we can do that, we need to make sure we fix some authentication stuff that's going to come bite us here pretty soon. So inside of the database, you'll see that it already has this thing. And we can actually we can actually create stuff here. So if we wanted to, let's just create something fake. So we'll create songs. And then in here, it's going to have one with an ID of one that is then going to have, oh, what did these need to have? They had have to have chord pro. And then this will just be a string that says this is pro. And then additionally, we needed to have an ID. And that's just going to be one in this case too. So let's save that off. And let's go back over here and refresh. So it's not actually finding anything. So I might not have set this up properly, but that's okay. It doesn't actually really matter for us. We're just gonna delete all this stuff. But the thing that is actually important to us is right here. So in rules, they have these read and write. Oh, this is actually why we couldn't read it either. But you require authentication to be able to read this data. In our case right now, we don't actually have users in our system yet. So if we have this authentication, we're never going to be able to get past this. So we need to actually change how this kind of stuff is working out for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually come in here and take this string and just turn it to true. We're going to do the same thing here. So we can both read and write. doesn't require anything fancy. This is obviously very bad. This is not what you would do. And this is why we're doing this. This is going to be our development version of the, the actual project inside of Firebase. It's not going to be a real one at the end. So now if we go back, I kind of wish I hadn't deleted that now, but it doesn't really matter. We fixed our rules, so now we should be able to connect to it. But in order for us to actually get this going anywhere, we need to have a way to add songs. So we're going to go up here and add song. We'll give it a title, which this is something that I can't believe we never had previously, but it does you know, make sense that a song would have a title. So we'll say const songs equals... And this is, I mean, we're going to be basically doing this. So let's, let's copy this and put that in here. And then what we want to do is we want to, we need to generate some sort of unique ID for this. So we're actually going to do that with, uh, by saying date.now, we'll just call this. So this will give us the second timestamp for right now. And this isn't foolproof, obviously, but we're going to assume that we're not going to have people who are hitting things at the exact same second to make songs because we're currently working in development. Um, so eventually we might we would have a better way of actually generating these things. But um, like it could be based on the user's ID and the timestamp, and then it would be unique because the same person could not create multiple songs at the same time. But for right now, this will do so. And then from here, what we're going to do is we're going to create one with an ID of ID, a title of title, and a chord pro of nothing to start out because this is we're just creating a new song. So that's us adding a new song to the list. And then we are setting the state of songs as is here. So we need to come up here. We need to bind this. So add song is going to equal this dot add song. Find this, save that, make sure everything compiles and we're good. And this is going to be a kind of a neat thing that I've never shown you before. And that is if you go in and you take a look at the React DevTools, one thing you can do is you can highlight this and then in the Rails con or not Rails console, in the JavaScript console down here, you can do dollar sign $R and then whatever it is that you are highlighting, it'll give you that component. So in this case, we can say dollar sign $R, add song, my new song. And it will go off and create this for us. So we're on songs uh, slash one, which isn't really any of any use to us. So if we go back to songs, you'll see that now we have song and then the actual timestamp for it. And if we go and we add another one, so let's do that again. So we'll do dollar $R. Add song, other song. If we look back, it happened instantly right there. We have our, our things going on in here that have their titles and their chord pros all empty. And then we can go in here and this is my new song.
Okay, so now we have some Chord Pro for it. And if we go back, click it again. But now, what happens if we go in here? Oh, yeah, our Chord Pro instantly updated, which this is pretty awesome. And then if we come back and we look at our listing again, and we just delete this other song from our database. We come back, it's already not there because we're using WebSockets. So all this stuff happens in real time to the point of if we create multiple tabs, all right, so let's, let's pop this off and we'll put this over here and then we'll move this this way. If we look at both of these simultaneously, there's kind of a neat thing that'll happen. So if we if we go in and we both edit these, I think this should just work. Yeah. It just updates on both sides because we are using WebSockets from both of these browsers to actually update what's in our database that now has this S in there, which I don't know what I was even trying to type. But that's it. That's all it took for us to add Firebase to our application and to get it to where we actually now have some way to store our data. In the, the next tutorial, we're going to kind of spruce the place up a bit and give it a little bit of more of a clean look and feel. And we're actually going to add a real way through the user interface to add songs and maybe delete songs. But as for right now, we actually have a way to store the data that we are creating and come back to it later. And this means I can go and tear down my application and turn it back on and I'll still have access to this data because we're connecting to Firebase. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, be sure to leave a comment down below telling me why you liked it and what you're going to do with this knowledge. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can get more of these tutorials each week. And also don't forget to join us on Patreon, Facebook, Slack, so you can keep the chat going, and on Twitter. But as always, have a nice week.